With Philips Air Fryer, its twin turbo star technology cooks with up to 90% less fat. There's always a way to make life better. Innovation and you, Philips. Sanchez, one of my favorite restaurants uh, with the new normal. Yeah, you can see this, uh, you know, I, we never thought that we'll require this mask. So I hope each of you all are using these masks when you're, you know, when you're going out. Uh, you know, it's important to stay really safe while uh, there are a lot of cases which are asymptomatic. Uh, it's important that you don't spread the virus to people who might just not know what's going to hit them. It is a dangerous virus. Uh, I'd love to start by, you know, not with this note, but of course to say that I'm finally out and uh, it, it's just a great experience to be out, uh, you know, especially at a restaurant. Of course, I've been out on the ground doing some relief work. Coming back to what we be, we're doing right now, World on a Plate goes live from the 5th to the 9th. We've had some amazing chefs, uh, you know, yesterday. Today we just saw a stunning masterclass by Vikas Seth uh, with his, uh, you know, unbelievable jackfruit, uh, full jackfruit taco. I just can't believe that you can do these kind of recipes. This is what World on a Plate is all about. Beauty of chefs innovating, coming out with some great ideas, techniques, which uh, that's what we're looking forward to see. And that's what uh, I, I, I saw with Vikas's technique. And I'm really excited that, uh, more excited because I might get to taste it if he lands up at the restaurant. And I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that's gonna happen. Because yesterday, you guys really made me hungry. All you chefs really made me hungry. And I'm, I'm looking forward to eat that taco. Because if you are watching or not watching, make sure you're here right in some time. So, moving on, you know, like we said, uh, World on a Plate I had five seasons, uh, which was an on-ground event. So, what we wanted to do is bring about all the mystery, the action which happened behind the scenes. And so now, like last, Yes, like yesterday, we spoke about 2016 with George, Gary, Matt coming and starting off World in a Plate. 2017 was a bit of a big surprise for even us because 
with the success of 2016, we had a brilliant lineup for 2017. I could not imagine that we could get these kind of chefs coming uh, uh, to World in a Plate Season 2. We love to have many of the chefs who had done last time, but we had Gary Mahigan who came back to headline the festival. And uh, Gary loves, loves India, he loves riding bikes. So we also had a great opportunity for him to go and ride uh, a motorbike with uh, India's only uh, person who, who's finished the Dakar Rally, C.S. Santosh, and that was a beautiful experience for him and us to take him to Santosh's farm. The second guy who I was really excited and the world and Bangalore and India was excited about was the sweet assassin, Adriano Zumbo. There was a lot of expectation and he lived it up to that highest level. The dessert he pulled off was mind-blowing. He did a, a take on uh, chai uh, and he made a dessert called the dirty chai and it blew all our minds. And of course, we had Elena Dugan, the winner of MasterChef 2016, uh, sorry, 17, and uh, she just, uh, you know, made it up. Uh, she just won, and we want to bring her. We want to see contestants, the life which happens inside, uh, what happens behind the scenes. So we brought her, and it was exciting to see that uh, she made the lineup, and uh, excited to know what happened at. MasterChef Australia as a contestant. Then we had the Asian pastry queen Janice Wong who did a beautiful uh, hand uh, painted chocolate on the wall and it was so amazing we couldn't believe that it was you know even chocolate it was like a painting and people could actually pick off and eat it the children were so happy and, you know, and it was exciting for all of us and last but not the least added one of India's superstar, uh, you know, Ranveer Brar, uh, to the lineup. So it was a heavy duty five lineup festival, two cities, Bangalore and uh, Mumbai. And uh, what I'm going to tell you after this break is going to be fun. So make sure you watch out. I mean, watch out for my conversations. I know you're excited about the chefs coming. You should be excited about my conversations because the inside stuff is going to come from me. Uh, apart from that, of course, the next chef who I'm going to introduce, chef's couple, they call the Troublesome Duo. Uh, you know, they are my, some of my great friends. We made friends in the industry over time. Uh, the first time I met them was at, uh, you know, season uh, four in Mumbai or at Marco's dinner. And uh, of course, in, in 2020, 2020, we just uh, finished Ma uh, World on a Plate uh, season uh, five in Delhi. Uh, they were a part of that as well. Very talented, Neha Lakani and uh, uh, Ashay Topadkar. Uh, Neha is a chef ambassador from Kodabla and, uh, uh, and she's one of the best pastry chefs in the country. And uh, uh, Ashe has worked with some of the top chefs from around the world, uh, including Gordon Ramsay's of the world. So you're going to have some amazing cooking happening at your desk. I hope you guys have gone and got, download their recipes, uh, you know, and um, uh, I hope you're going to have a great time cooking with them. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you the, the dish, you can go find out. Soon after that, after the masterclass, we're going to have a live conversation with them and then have a conversation with Anuti Vishal, one of India's leading food critics. Uh, she's again a good friend and we want to know what's happening in, in, uh, in, in, in the food uh, line. She's been talking to a lot of chefs, supporting a lot of chefs and we want to know from her side what's happening. So stay tuned and um, we're really excited about these masterclasses, of course. The most important thing you guys need to know is World in a Plate is for charity. Go and contribute at www.keto.org slash the WHW Kitchen for the World Hunger Warriors. See you on the other side soon. Enjoy your masterclass. Hi guys, my name is Neha Lakhani and I'm a pastry chef. 
and my name is Ashish Dupatkar and I'm a cuisine chef and together we are the founders of Ark Mithai so Ark Mithai is a brand of luxury indian sweets and savories and uh, it's completely free of preservatives it's 100% environment friendly packaging and uh, it's basically a modern spin on classic indian mithai recipes So today we are going live with the uh, World on a Plate which is uh, a great platform where they are going live for charity so that they can raise funds to feed as many people as they can. In fact, the World Hunger Warrior Kitchen has now fed almost about half a million of people in the last 90 days. Uh in fact, now they also want to set up their own food kitchen where they can cook for these needy people. So we really urge you together to donate as much as they can on their website so that this whole campaign that they are trying to do helps us feed more people. We are trying to do our bit and we think you should also do your bit. So for that, we today here are going to be making two recipes, one by me and one from Chef Ashe, and so that we can help support needy people and do our bit. So let us take you through what we have here ready for you guys and so you can also start cooking with us side by side. Uh we are going to give you ample time to set your ingredients. So don't worry about it and if you have any questions uh you can ask us at the end of the video or you can we are also going to go live on our uh, Instagram handles so if you have any questions you can always send it to us on Instagram and we would be happy to answer them for you so uh to begin with we are going to explain here i'm going to be making a plum cobbler so i have my ingredients ready here which is the plums the corn flour the brown sugar the cinnamon the vanilla don't stress about the ingredients because we are going to all list them down for you guys uh we also have the ingredients here that is some almond powder uh some flour some baking soda caster sugar egg yolk salt and butter these all are my preparations but while let's take you a quick look through what chef ashi has prepared here for you right so on the savory part we're going to make a white mushroom risotto a uh, very simple with stuff that you probably would have at home so i've got chopped onions here i've got some garlic which i've crushed with a knife i've got some walnuts just to garnish uh, some basic salt and pepper a little bit of olive oil some cream and of course the arborio rice and well little bit of butter don't worry we're not going to use all of that and that's pretty much about it so let's begin with neha's cobbler okay so first thing we are going to do is the cobbler because it's going to take some time to bake in the oven so we'll show you how it's moving uh the first thing we are going to do is we have here ready our my plums now the best part about plums is they are seasonal and i love to cook with seasonal produce because it's just a uh, very tasty very nutritious and it's the best thing to do if you eat by the season So the first thing we are going to do is cut our plums. As you see, this is the size we roughly uh, chop them into. You can also dice them if you want, but I think the longer, I think it's better. So it's just very simple. I'm going to sprinkle my cinnamon powder here. I'm going to put the brown sugar on top, and I'm also going to put the corn flour. Just going to give it a mix. mix it well so the same recipe you can actually do with uh, uh peaches also you can also do with your favorite berries like your blueberry your blackberry or a mix of all the berries but just try and keep the fruit a bit citric please uh, i don't recommend using uh bananas or mangoes or things like that so yeah just going to give this a mix as soon as this is done We're just gonna put it aside, and we're gonna make the crumble on the top. The crumble is gonna go for chilling for say about ten minutes or so, and while the crumble is chilling, Chef Ashish is gonna show you. So it's gonna the video is gonna happen in parts while I do something and it's setting, and then Chef Ashish can continue. So that way, we thought you could learn two recipes uh, in the same video, which would be great. So you see, if your plums get a little bit of little bit mashed up and the juice is coming out, that's a good thing. So don't stress about that. but just make sure all your corn flour is mixed in if you see if you come closer if you see everything is now getting mixed in and the juices of the plum are coming out and the same thing is going to happen with peaches or your berries also because the fruit has so much juice in it so don't worry about that okay so this is done i'm just going to keep this aside not do anything into it uh actually i forgot to put the vanilla so i'm just going to give it a quick mix again Just gonna drizzle a little bit of vanilla, and just gonna mix it again. You see, that's it. 
There you go. Okay. So the next thing. While that is done, in a bowl, big bowl, I'm going to take the same uh, spatula here. I'm going to put my butter. Put these extra dishes away, make some space. Put my sugar, caster sugar. You can also use brown sugar here if you like, but totally your, your call. Okay, so the first thing, I'm going to mix these ingredients well. Okay. So you've got to clean your butter and sugar well, the first step. Your butter should always be at room temperature. Because if your butter is too cold, then it will be very tough to uh, mix the ingredients. And you see it all come together. Okay. It's coming out. Okay. So your butter and sugar at room temperature. Now I'm going to add the egg yolk. So we'll also give you an option for egg free recipe. Basically just instead of your egg you can add a little bit of milk, say about one fourth cup of milk. So for those of you who guys don't eat the egg. That's it. I'm now going to put in all my dry ingredients. That's your almond powder. That's a little bit of salt. Now why the salt is it gives a really uh, nice flavor, it cuts down the extra sugar, it also uh, helps give a nice color. I'm putting in some baking powder and I'm putting in some flour. I'm going to give this a quick mix. One thing which is very important when you bake anything is you should always uh, scrape the sides of your bowl. You see as a lot of things are on the side and it needs to mix well. So you'll have to do this 2-3 times. I'm going to mix this well. Okay. Yeah, now it's pretty close to done. I'm stopping my mixer. Now I need to chill the dough for a bit because if I do this immediately, so now what happens? Why do I need to chill my dough? Now imagine if I put this on top of my cup crumbler, uh, cobbler, sorry. Uh, when I put it in the oven, it's all going to spread like a cake. But if I chill it and then I grate and I put it on the cobbler, it's going to retain the shape that the crumble is actually going to come when I'm grating it. So that's the point of uh, cooling it. So I'm quickly gonna clean wrap this and so you take a plastic wrap. Plastic wrap is something we chefs use the most. It's the most uh, convenient thing ever. There you go. So I'm gonna try and make it flat so that it chills faster. But in order to grate it, uh, freezing it like a bowl is always uh, better because it's easier to grate but just to show you guys and make it quick, I'm going to do it flat. So I'm going to put this in the freezer, I'm going to clean my station and I'm going to head over the camera to Shafashi while he's going to continue with his recipe now. So this is going in the freezer guys and then it's with Shafashi and I will see you guys for 10 minutes once this is chilled. Right, thank you Neha. I can't look forward to the cobbler any more than I am already. So, what we have here is uh, chopped onions and the mushrooms. We'll use that to make the puree first thing. I'm gonna clean the so, dishes. let's jump off over to this side guys. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is heat up the pan a little bit. Uh, we're gonna saute these uh, mushrooms. And then we're going to blitz it with a little bit of cream to make a nice little puree for the risotto. Now one thing that I always tell people, my uh, the chefs that work along with me, is whenever we're sauteing mushrooms, it's important that you do a small quantity first and in a larger pan. So you never ever crowd the pan, otherwise what's going to happen is the water from the mushrooms is all going to come out and the mushrooms are going to boil instead of freely sauteing. So you want to get very little colour. 
we're gonna heat this pan first. We've got our olive oil ready here, just a little bit to get it started. Okay, so we're just gonna wait till the pan, you can actually see a little bit of uh, steam coming off that pan and start smoking a little bit. I think it's best if we put this on. The pan is almost there now. You can see the smoke coming out from the pan. And a little bit of olive oil. Just about like maybe two teaspoons of it. And I'm going to keep uh, this mixer container right here. So the mushrooms can go straight into this. There's a little bit of caramelization on the top, so it's going nice and brown. So like I said, I'm not crowding this pan, I'm not putting all of them together because otherwise it's going to take off the heat from the pan and it's going to boil. We don't want it boiled, so we always do it a few mushrooms at a time. It's more time consuming, but you know, the end result is always so much better. Lovely color on that. Now we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Yeah, just a bit. A little bit of that pepper. And a little bit of fresh thyme. As you know, it's uh, because of the lockdown, it's a little bit difficult right now to get your hands on good ingredients. So I haven't really been able to get my hands on uh, any wild mushrooms, hence we're using just the button mushrooms. Okay. So you can just remove the bigger sticks if you'd like. That's it. And the small bits of time can obviously stay in there. They'll get blended inside the puree. Add that into the blender. Put some more oil back into the same pan. With the mushrooms. So you're basically uh, sorting the whole quantity into, uh, like, yes. split it into yes. two, two times. Yes. So a lot of people kind of puree this, uh, puree the raw mushroom for the puree, but it's, I don't think it's a very good idea because then you will get a very rawish taste in the puree. But why have we done it twice? Uh, so it's not about doing it twice, like I said, we try to, we're not trying to crowd the pan uh, too much. We want to do a little quantity at a time, so that they saute and don't boil over. 
So if I'm making the last batch of uh, puree for the risotto in the restaurant, I would probably have one guy who would be doing, let's say, three or four kgs of mushrooms, a small at a time, and that's it. All the boys in there. brown I'm gonna add uh, just a little bit of the garlic just two cloves one and two the garlic is already pressed yes so we've just pressed it uh, at the end of uh, the night you could probably chop it but then it cooks and burns off too fast so I kind of prefer to just uh, crush it and use it so the flavors come out and eventually it just integrates completely anyway You might want to just see the color of those mushrooms. Perfect. So we're just going to add a little bit of butter then we'll lower the flame. Okay. We'll add a little bit of butter. Okay. Now we're going to take this off the heat. So there's enough heat in the pan already. With like that, I'm going to add probably just a little bit of that onion. Yeah. Perfect, and a little bit of time and just toss it over. Okay, a little bit of salt again. A little bit of pepper. If you've got fresh uh, cracked pepper, nothing like that. Probably use the cracked pepper. I'm going to take the biggest sticks of time off. And that's about it. This goes straight into this blender. And now, I'm just going to add some cream to it and start blending it. So, here we go. Excellent one. Just gonna add a dash of cream. That's it. That's it. So that's just about a spoonful, a tablespoon. Now again, a lot of times people add a lot of cream to a lot of times people add a lot of cream to the risotto. But remember, when you add too much cream, it takes off from the flavor. So you add just enough to blend the puree. That's it. Lovely. Just like a nice puree here. Yes, please. So, so that's how we want it. As smooth as you can possibly get. Now what we will do is we use the same pan that we used for the mushrooms. Are you uh, basically using like a cooking on a medium flame or a high flame or? Uh, so when I do the risotto now, it's all going to be on the low or a medium flame. But when you saute something, the idea is to give it color. You're not cooking it because you want to cook it through, through and through really. You want to just give it a little color on the top. And the heat from the top goes right inside. So it's going to cook eventually. If you give the mushrooms a little bit of color, take them off, you're going to keep cooking. So for example, even when I put them in the blender, the heat is still in there, you need to remember that. 
So the mushrooms are still cooking from the dead. Okay, so this is uh, nice and hot now. It's not too hot, not like the mushrooms. Just a little bit hot. Now I'm going to add uh, quite a bit of olive oil in there. So this, I would say, is around three tablespoons because we can get plenty of risotto. Yes, that's a risotto. Um, you think we can take a two minutes break so I can take out the crumble and put it on the cobbler? Perfect. So what I'll do is I'm just going to lower the flame and keep it here. And we come to the cobbler. Okay, so I'm going to give that to you. So, uh, if you see, we have the dough here. It's not very chilled because uh, the time is a bit short but it is pretty stable from before so I'm going to cut it into four and use the part that's most chill she's going to cut it I'm going to try and if you see here the juices are pretty much out from the plums and it looks nice and delicious so I'm just going to So you see now this way it's going to retain uh, the shape. Okay, so if you see this is still a bit soft but it should be completely uh, frozen when you guys uh, grate it. Grating gives it more crumbly texture. So that's hence I like grating the dough. But just make sure it's well frozen guys. If it's soft then it's not fun. Okay. You see? I'm gonna spread it a little bit. I'm just gonna show you an example. I'm just gonna show that to you. In case you wanna just put your dough into parts like this. You can also do that but I don't uh, recommend it because then it starts spreading like a cake. <coughs> So I'm not a big fan of that but just to show you in case you want to do that. But grating is the best option. Okay. Don't overdo the crumble also because you don't want like a thick cookie layer on the top. So just the right balance. Just according to me this much is enough. So you have some fruit showing, you have some of that. And I'm also going to take some walnuts to add some crunch and I'm going to put it into the cobbler. Are you sealing my walnuts? Yes, I'll give you some more. So you can put walnuts, you can put almonds, you can put any sorts of nuts you like. You can also put some raisins. Um, yeah, if you can also put some uh, pistachios if you like. So anything. If you don't like anything, you don't have to put anything. So that's okay. So there you go. Now the cobbler is ready. I'm going to pop it into the oven at 170 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes till the top is nice and golden brown. Uh, Shavasha, can you help me pop it in the oven? My hands are dirty. Yes. There you go. The oven is already preheating. So make sure that your oven is preheating for at least 30 minutes before. There you go. You can see. Just put it on the medium shell. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Okay. So we're gonna get uh, started with the resort now. Okay, I, I kind of switched it off for a bit. I didn't want to burn the oil. So I'm back there now. It's a medium flame. Oh uh, chef, do you have to teach that AC? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Heating the oil. Now I'm going to add the arborio rice to it in. So unlike Indian rice, we don't want to wash any of this. The reason being, there's a lot of starch in the arborio and we want the starch so that your risotto kind of uh, comes together as a nice rich porridge. So what are you doing right now is kind of toasting it in a little bit of olive oil. When you do that, 
your rice, uh, Angkori, your rice kind of soaks up a lot of water. It kind of, it's, it's like a sponge. It soaks up everything around it. So we wanted to first soak in all the olive oil just for the flavor. Toast it a little bit. Keep stirring this. So I once worked for an Italian chef at uh, a restaurant called Le Bistro Deluxe uh, at Marble Arch in London. So he was the one, uh, Chef Luigi, he was the one who kind of taught me how to make a risotto. And uh, the reason you do this, like I said, is to open up the pores of the risotto so it absorbs more and more of the stock or the water or the wine that you have here. gotten a bit too hot so I've taken it off so that I don't burn the Arborio rice. We just want to lightly toast it and not give it any color absolutely. That's a, that's a real no-no. Taking this off. Now you can either use wine which I don't have at the moment but uh, you can either use white wine to cook the rice or you can use uh, stock in case of a mushroom risotto you can use a mushroom stock. So you can buy uh, dried mushrooms, like dried shiitakes, dried oysters and then uh, soak them overnight and that water can be used here. But since we're struggling right now in the city with, uh, with you know, imported uh, ingredients, I haven't got any dried mushrooms with me. So what I'm going to do is just add some water here. I think World on a Plate is doing uh, great wonders by organizing this charity and feeding the needy people. You know, while we all are staying home, we all are staying safe, there are still so many who are uh, not so privileged and who are not so safe out there being in the open. So. I think it's a great, great cause and I think we all should make our effort to uh, donate towards this charity and do whatever best we can. No amount is ever so little or too much uh, to do for a great cause. So guys, once again, just a reminder, uh, while you guys are sitting home, log on to their website for World Hunger Warriors and help them achieve the goal uh, that they are planning. It's a simple click, just click on the donate button and uh, send in whatever money you are comfortable with. Absolutely, that's a very, very good cause and uh, this is a applaudable uh, initiative by World on a Plate and like Neha just said, it's uh, it's very sad when you walk down the road and see uh, people who are hungry and you know, who, who are wanting for food. I mean, although the entire restaurant industry is struggling at the moment, but... Uh, but I think we as chefs, yes. it's our utmost duty uh, on priority, uh, number one thing that we know the importance of food and we know how it feeds us. So it's the most important thing that one can do at this moment to feed the needy. 
Okay, so I would say this risotto here is almost, uh, let's say, just about 20% cooked. So we're gonna cook it slowly. So the, the way with the risotto is, you wanna keep adding the liquid to it. When it absorbs uh, the existing liquid, you just keep adding more. So either more of wine or more of the vegetable stock or the mushroom stock or just plain water in this case. So this is absolutely simple stuff that you can do at home, like a no-fuss risotto. I understand that there might be people who might not have a bottle of wine lying at home and if you're lucky enough to have one, you can send one to me because uh, you don't have liquor stores open around here. Okay, so rice is coming together. I'm just going to increase the heat again. Just a little bit, yes. So when you're cooking, always believe that you need to see what is happening in the pan. There isn't, there isn't a magic formula. There isn't a magic formula as you know, it, it has to be cooked on uh, low medium. There's no rule as such. So what you do is you have to observe what's happening in the pan. If it's, uh, if you see that things are kind of catching at the bottom, you lower the heat. You need to know that end of the day, it's you who are in control of the pan, the heat, and what's going on in the pan. Okay. So this is going a little bit further. So at this stage, I'm going to add a few more to it. And I'm going to lower down the heat. Okay. okay. So I'm going to add all of that puree. Just a few. Now, you want to just hold this. Once we reach this stage, you don't want to just scramble the whole thing up because then all your risotto grains, the grains of the lovely arborio are going to break up. So now it needs a lot of love and care. More of handling this one. Okay, so we can just hold it. And let it cook out. Guys, any questions you have, end of the video, like I said earlier, we will be going live uh, on Instagram later. So any questions, any doubts you have, feel free to shoot them to us and please do not hitch. Every question is a good question. So it is only going to be informative uh, to you and to many other people. Absolutely. So please don't hitch. Yeah, I'm going to give you a little tip. Uh, the way a lot of uh, chefs make risottos in restaurants is that they half cook the arborio. The stage where I added the mushroom puree, that's when chefs mostly take it out. They put it on a flat tray and kind of cool it down. And when you guys actually go to the restaurant, sit down and place an order, is when the risotto goes into the pan with the puree and we just finish it right off. Oh, so, go. Oh. We're gonna keep folding this uh, risotto very gently so we don't break the grains. I'm guessing just a few couple of more minutes and this risotto should be nice and ready. Okay, so now usually I would add uh, another key ingredient but uh, since I want to keep this uh, kind of low cal is not the right word, but then uh, a li little less rich, 
a little bit light since Sneha and her sister Vishweta is our videographer for the day. So for these two ladies, I'm not gonna add any parmesan, but usually you could add uh, for this kind of uh, this kind of quantity, you might add let's say about uh, 70 to 80 grams of parmesan. But are we adding that in the pan to melt it, or are we yes. adding that after plating? No, so you just add it right now. Now is the time to add the parmesan, and then you. The texture of the risotto, you balance it with the stock, with the parmesan and with the butter. So the parmesan is going to make it thicker and the butter is going to make it more velvety and smoother. And if it's too thick, just to thin it out a little bit, that's how uh, you use your stock or your wine foam. Okay, so, so this is thickening up a little bit. I'm going to add just another touch of water. And then we're almost ready to go. We're going to add the butter to this. So there's now please do not get alarmed. There's a substantial quantity of butter. So although I'm skipping the parmesan for you ladies, I'm still gonna carry on with the butter. I cannot make a risotto without the butter. So now the way to do this is always use nice hard uh, chilled butter, hard diced butter. So it melts slowly and doesn't kind of uh, clarify inside the risotto. So a little bit of salt there. Pepper. You can skip the pepper all together if you want. Huh? Okay, close your eyes ladies. Okay, there we go. That's it. Okay. We'll just gently fold it in. Loads of them, so you could do a nice uh, cauliflower risotto, you could do a pumpkin risotto, you make the same pumpkin together with the, with the, you know, with the mushrooms. Instead of sauteing it, you could just roast the pumpkin, blend it with the cream. With so if you're doing pumpkin, we should roast it and blend it with the cream, and if yes. you're doing cauliflower then? Then the same thing, so you would blanch the cauliflowers, cook them, and then uh, just kind of saute them with a little bit of uh, onions and butter and just a very little stock and cream to make your puree okay that's about it you can immediately see the change in the texture of the risotto so when you put it you know that it's sitting down on its own it's going flat which means the texture is just right we can go with the flame and we're going to start plating it so now while that is done we're going to take another pan this pan on. Put it on this side. And okay. put the flame up once again. I'm gonna sort a little bit of mushrooms just for the garnish. You need more cream? Uh, no, I think that should be enough. So put some olive oil here. So just like we did before with the mushrooms, I'm gonna sort these as well. So instead of uh, Cutting them in halves, now I have to slice them for a garnish. Now you could use any of the mushrooms that you get, absolutely any mushrooms. Uh, my favorite ones being chanterelles and uh, oyster mushrooms. You could probably just saute those. You can uh, clean them, mix them up and then saute all of that together and then garnish them on top of the uh, risotto.
whenever you're doing this at home, make sure that you have your exhaust running on full because that's going to give out quite a bit of smoke. Oh yes, there we go. Thank you. You could if you're making a seafood risotto, so you would make it the same way with let's say if you're making a risotto nero, which is a black risotto made with squid ink, so you can use prawns, you can use squid. But I wouldn't really recommend using um, prawns and chicken because then you're going to take away from the flavor of the of the mushroom. But then again, if you love your chicken, you love your chicken. Okay, so. So when you're doing that, make sure you're not scraping the bottom of the teflon pan, otherwise obviously you're going to ruin the pan. Like I said before, uh, instead of uh, button mushrooms, if you can find, you should uh, use oyster mushrooms, any of the lovely wild mushrooms that you have nowadays.
just for that little crunch. You can also garnish this with uh, like pea shoots. They go very well with the mushrooms. And yes, that's about it. That's the mushroom risotto. If you need, you can. You can actually add truffle oil to that. But uh, I, I have some got truffle oil. Oh, you do? Excellent. So now I'm getting some lovely truffle oil. Just lift this risotto up. Truffles uh, really, really work well with mushroom, being mushroom themselves. So truffle is a type of mushroom, as you know. So uh, they go very well with mushrooms, with uh, all kinds of fried mushrooms, and especially in risotto. Right, so while she's there, I'm going to just try and find some of that So I'm sure that truffle oil would really help this. Meanwhile, I'm going to have a check on the time left on the English formula. I have Another some truffle oil and I have some minutes. truffle salt as well. Wonderful. There you go. Right, we have this lovely artisanal uh, truff from Peri. So since this is low on seasoning, I don't mind a little bit of truffle salt right on the top. Like that. That's amazing. That's amazing salt. I mean, just, just the, this aroma from this, it's, it's incredible. They've got bits of white alba truffles in there and I've got some lovely white truffle oil again from Paris I'm sorry guys, unfortunately, uh, we wanted to use uh, some wine, some lovely uh, wild mushrooms, but we couldn't find them. So instead, we made this risotto using the most basic uh, ingredients that you could probably find at any of your local grocery stores. That's about it. Would you really like to taste? I you did. Like that portion. Okay, Big into this. One with a bit of Guys, we need you to realize why we are here, why we cook this delicacies uh, and why we cook this delicious food. There are so many who don't get to eat Absolutely. at all. So hence, all this cause is for all those needy people, once again, donate generously for World on a Plate. Do not reach yeah. at all. Every Anything that you do is going to make a difference. So, uh, let me explain you what World on a Plate is trying to do. Like I said earlier, they are trying to set up a... Uh, a warrior soup kitchen uh, which is basically to explain in a simpler language uh, like we all know the kitchens where we took langar the langar in the gurudwara the mandir that is what they are trying to make a big uh, soup kitchen for the world uh, warriors so that they can uh, feed so many people and they can easily cook and make more meals reach the needy so we need you guys to support us absolutely it's a fantastic initiative isn't it Absolutely. Let's go pop into the oven quickly and see uh, what is the status of the cobbler. Okay, let's see. It is looking pretty close to done. That's the kind of color we want. In case you want more, you can bake more. So I'm gonna now uh, pull this out of the oven quickly. Need some help there? Huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna clear this up. Cobbler is ready. So you have a fantastic meal. You have a mushroom risotto. You have a plum cobbler. You guys, if you guys like more crunchy stuff and more baked stuff, that looks you could, amazing. You could, but please do not try and dig in at this point. It's very very hot. However, it's meant to be have hot, had hot. 
So you can have this with vanilla ice cream, some vanilla custard, or just exactly like this and not do anything at all. That looks amazing. I haven't tried this because we're going to spend some time. Yeah, that looks, that tastes amazing. And But just make sure it's warm when you guys are having it. So guys, thank you for having uh, joining us here today and watching our video. And we really, really hope that together with us, you can make a contribution for World on a Plate for all the warriors who are trying to feed the needy. Thank you, guys. Please do. Thank you. Bye bye. Ek kadam aage, fir do kadam piche. Bro. Health or taste ki ladai mein ab aap rahiye do kadam aage with Philips Air Fryer. Iski twin turbo star technology cooks with up to 90% less fat. There's always a way to make life better. Innovation and you, Philips.